what layers of the Earth's atmosphere does the sun's energy travel through? So remember, we have this energy coming from the sun, electromagnetic energy flying 92 million miles from the sun through space. But before it reaches the Earth's atmosphere, before it reaches the Earth's surface, it's got to go through the Earth's atmosphere. And the Earth's atmosphere is very thin compared to the Earth. Compared to the size of the Earth, the Earth's atmosphere is very, very thin. Now, this is not going to be to scale, but imagine we have this here represents the Earth. And so we have energy coming from the sun. And as this energy comes from the sun, it's going to hit the Earth. But before it gets to the Earth, it's got to go through the Earth's atmosphere. Now, the Earth's atmosphere begins uh, where we live right here at the surface of the Earth. This is where we are. Here's our houses and our trees and small. Here's our cars. And you can see some squirrels in the tree. So there's the Earth's the bottom of the Earth's atmosphere. The top of the Earth's atmosphere, well, that's kind of hard to say. The problem is that the, the, the atmosphere gets thinner and thinner and thinner as you, as you increase your elevation or your altitude off of the Earth. It's hard to say where it ends. Uh, for us, what we'll do is we'll say that the Earth's atmosphere ends at uh, about up here, let's say 100 miles is where we'll say it ends. Are there some gases? Uh, above that line? Yeah, there, there's some gases above that line. But for us, we'll talk about the 100 mile mark as to be the top of the Earth's atmosphere. And even if you're at 90 miles up, it's really, really thin air, air up there. It gets thinner as you go up. The, the atmosphere, the amount of gases here at the Earth's surface is a lot. It's pretty thick. There's a lot of molecules packed together right here. The gravity of the Earth is going to pull those gases down. Now, as I go up a little bit higher, it's going to thin out a little bit. The, the amount of gases here is not as thick, not as dense, not as concentrated. If I go up even higher, again, it thins out even a little bit more. And this continues as we go up higher and higher and higher. And you know that uh, as you go up higher, eventually you get to the point where you're not going to be able to breathe up there and you'll need some sort of support system. Uh, it gets thinner and then even thinner as you head up even further. So we find that at the bottom of the atmosphere, where we live here at the bottom of the Earth's atmosphere, the air has a, um, is thicker and there, therefore it's greater pressure, air pressure down there where towards the top, it's a little bit thinner. So the air down towards the bottom of the Earth is thicker air. Therefore, that air is going to have a higher air pressure. As we rise up higher off of the Earth's surface through the atmosphere, the air is going to get a little bit thinner. And since the air is thinner the higher we go, there's less molecules up there. Therefore, there's less pressure from those molecules. So if we look at this, as we increase our altitude, as we go higher up off of the Earth's surface, our pressure, the air pressure, decreases. So as we increase altitude, we decrease the amount of air pressure. And that seems to make sense. If the Earth's gravity is pulling things down, it's going to pull most of that, those molecules down towards the Earth's surface. Now, if we look at this, you guys probably remember uh, when you were drawing some beautiful landscapes that you draw some pretty mountains. And usually at the top of those mountains, you would put some snow caps on there. Oh, that is beautiful right there. And you put some snow caps up there because you know as you increase your altitude, it's going to get colder up there. And that is true, at least for the first layer of the atmosphere. But as we go to different layers of the atmosphere, it actually will increase its temperature and get a little bit warmer. I like to talk about those different layers right now. So if there's the Earth's atmosphere, if we go up to a certain uh, point, we're going to see that the temperature is going to decrease. The temperature is going to get colder. And that makes sense. As I go further up, my temperature is going to decrease. Let's say till about this point right here, I have my temperature is decreasing. So right here, it's getting, it's getting colder. And that makes sense to us. As you go higher up, it gets colder. But once you reach this point, about uh, seven miles up or so, it's actually going to start getting warmer the higher up you go. So now as I increase this way, my temperature is actually going to start increasing. And now it doesn't get as warm as it is here at the Earth's surface, but it does increase in the temperature. And so we say that there's another temperature zone here. All right, so right there, the temperature is going to be increasing. 
and and when we get up to this point, it, it switches again. Uh, when we get to that that second level, we actually see a decrease in temperature up to about there. We see the temperature start going down. This is actually where the coldest temperatures in our atmosphere are, is that layer. So again, we see a decrease in temperature there. And then finally, there's also a fourth zone where the temperature is also increasing again. And so the temperature up here at this point is, is also increasing. And that goes up pretty high up into the sky. So we see that we have these different temperature zones in the Earth's atmosphere. The Earth's atmosphere is, is divided up into different layers. Uh, these layers have their na have names as well. And uh, if you go to your Earth science reference tables, we talked about those before, and we open up our Earth science reference tables to page 14, all right, you'll see the names of those different temperature layers. So, so this chart here, this diagram, talks about the the different properties of the Earth's atmosphere. So if we see over here, we have the title selected properties of the Earth's atmosphere. And the properties that this chart talks about is the temperature of the Earth's atmosphere, the pressure, the atmospheric or air pressure, and then also the amount of water vapor, the concentration of water vapor in the Earth's atmosphere. So there's three things that this chart is conveying, this chart is showing us here. It's showing us about the temperature, the atmospheric pressure, and the water vapor. The pressure we've already mentioned. We already mentioned that as we go higher, the pressure is going to go lower. And if we look at the atmospheric pressure chart, sure enough, uh, if we look at the line for atmospheric pressure, it follows this here, we notice that it's an inverse line all right. And it shows us that the pressure measured in ATM, which stands for atmospheres, at the Earth's surface, and the Earth's surface is this bottom line down here. See where it says sea level over on the left-hand side? So this line down here at the bottom is sea level. That's where we live. That's the bottom, the base of the Earth. And we notice that as we, uh, if we're at sea level at the Earth's surface, the pressure is one atmosphere, meaning there's one atmosphere atmosphere of pressure above us, and that makes sense. But as we increase our altitude, as we go higher up, we'll notice that that pressure decreases, the pressure goes down. And it goes down pretty quick. You notice as soon as you get past um, that, that first seven mile mark, that's a lot lower, maybe about a quarter of the amount of, uh, a quarter of the pressure that we'd see here at the Earth's surface. So atmospheric pressure is shown. There's also temperature, and we mentioned how the temperature decreases, gets colder, and then increases, gets warmer. And sure enough, they show that here on the this line. So we see here the temperature line is decreasing till about that seven mile mark right there. And then the temperature is going to increase after that. So this line here shows me that the temperature is increasing. So we see down here temperature measured in degrees Celsius. We see that it's decreasing, then increasing. It then decreases again, and then finally increases at the end, and it continues to increase throughout the rest of the atmosphere. And you'll notice that we take those changes in temperature, where it's increasing, where it's decreasing, and we draw some lines on there. You see these nice little dashed lines to show us where these temperature zones are. The bottom zone is called the troposphere. So the bottom layer is called the troposphere. Stratosphere is the second layer. And then the last two are the mesosphere and thermosphere. And you can see that the boundary between those layers also have names. The boundary between the troposphere and the stratosphere, which is right here, is called the tropopause, as well as there's the stratopause and the mesopause as well. So we can go back to our diagram and we could label these things. We have the bottom layer, which is called the troposphere. As soon as we see the temperature increasing, we call that the next layer the stratosphere. After the stratosphere is the mesosphere and then the thermosphere. So we see the atmosphere is divided up into four different layers. And you can see that here in our diagram. We can go back to the Earth Science Reference Tables and also see that there. Next thing, next property of the Earth's atmosphere on this chart is, uh, is going to be water vapor concentration. So if we look down here, why they don't put that title up top? I think it would be better up there. But anyway, down here shows you the amount of water vapor uh, in the Earth's atmosphere, one of the more important gases that we find in the Earth's atmosphere. 
if we look back here at this chart, we figure, well, how does water vapor get up into the air? Well, down here is where we have all our lakes and ponds and oceans, right? There's no lakes in, uh, up in the atmosphere. They're all on the Earth's surface. And water gets into the atmosphere because of evaporation, right? So that water evaporates into the Earth's atmosphere in that bottom layer, the troposphere. So in the troposphere is where we're going to find our greatest concentration of water vapor. And just like the pressure chart, we see that the amount of water vapor decreases with altitude. As you go up, the amount of water vapor decreases, the, the concentration of water vapor. And water vapor is what leads to the formation of clouds. And you'll notice as soon as you get into the middle part of the stratosphere, you, you don't get any water vapor. The, the highest cloud you see, you go outside and look at the highest, wispiest, cirrus cloud that you can find. Those clouds are up pretty high, but you know what, compared to our atmosphere, maybe they're up here in the stratosphere. You know, there are these wispy cirrus clouds that we see up there. You're not, when you look at a cloud, that cloud is not up in the mesosphere or the thermosphere. Those are way too high. Before we continue on, if you take a look at, on the left-hand side of this chart, uh, you'll notice that the altitude in the atmosphere is given in two different measurements. You can find the altitude in the atmosphere both using kilometers as well as miles please be sure you know which side of the altitude line you're using. If you use the left side, those are measured in kilometers. The right side are measured in miles. Very important to uh, focus on which side you're using. What they count by, the, the, the little tick marks, also count by differing amounts. If we look at the kilometer side, uh, we see zero, right? Zero kilometers is right at the Earth's surface. We have one, two, three, and then we get to 40, which means each one of these tick marks counts by 10. So this would represent 10 kilometers, 20, and then 30 kilometers over there. On the right-hand side, the miles side, we also have zero, but we have one, two, three, four spaces before we get to 25. This isn't counting by tens. This side over here is counting by five miles. So five, 10, 15, 20. All right. And whenever you're stuck, if you're not sure, right, there's nothing wrong with uh, filling those in. Write them right in there. That way you know what, what it's going to count by envelope of gas called the atmosphere that the sun's energy after traveling 92 million miles before the sun's energy hits the surface of the earth. It's got to go through these layers, and it doesn't just go through uh, without any sort of interaction. It uh, interacts with those gases, and we need to know what those layers are, and we need to understand some of the properties of the earth's atmosphere.